I'm glad you're here. If you're watching this video, then you're about to learn the things that take people a lot of trial error and some embarrassment to learn. Although you are perfectly capable of going live now, there is, if there is one word to describe live streaming, it's unforgiving. Simply because you're live, you only get one shot, and if you're streaming by yourself, then you have to pay attention to a lot of things. The good news is that you're here, and I'm gonna share with you my top 10 best practices to set you up for success. Number one, practice. This is just like public speaking, but for live TV. The best part about live streaming is that it's being broadcasted live. And when you're done streaming, it will automatically become a regular video on Facebook and YouTube. This will save you time on editing and publishing your videos. On the other hand, unlike regular video, if you mess up, you mess up. You don't get to do it again. So my number one tip is to give yourself plenty of time before you go live to set everything up and practice what you're going to present. Two, practice the technical stuff. When you go live by yourself, you're wearing all the hats and there is no room for error for technical issues. This is why it is so important to practice beforehand. Make sure your microphone and speakers are working and if you plan to share your screen on your desktop, then be sure to practice that too. To me, it's very distracting when someone has to delay their presentation by 10 minutes due to technical issues that could have been easily avoided with some practice. That said, sometimes things just happen when you're live and I have experienced that viewers are more forgiving when you're just honest about what the problems are that you're having. A good rule of thumb is to have everything ready to go at least 10 minutes prior to when you go live in case of any last minute surprises. Three, test your internet speed. If you are not connected to the internet, you cannot live stream, simple as that. Without getting too technical, the faster your internet connection is, the higher quality your live stream will be. Number four, be careful about copywritten material. Be sure not to play any copywritten music in your live stream. Many live stream platforms will delete your stream once it's over, or worse, it may stop your stream altogether as it's going, which would be a huge bummer. And I can attest to this personally because it has happened to me on professional shoots, and the platforms don't give you any warning for no reason. Just, nope, you're done. Five, if you've never gone live before, do a practice one on private. Most live stream platforms, you can choose the privacy for your live stream. You can even make it so that you, can, you are the only one who can see it. I recommend doing this for your first time just to practice so that you can get the feel of how it works and where the buttons are. Number six, you can always delete the stream. What if the worst case scenario happens? The quality is bad, you mess up your presentation, and you're just horrified that now this thing is living on the internet forever. Just delete it. Just like any other post, you have the ability to delete a live stream once you're done. Keep your head held high, delete the post, and try again. Live streaming is a process of combining skills of public speaking, video production, live TV, and business strategy, and it takes practice. Keep going, I promise you'll get better. Number seven, perform as if a lot of people are watching, even if there isn't. When you first start out, you may see that only a few people are actually watching live, and that's okay. For any live stream, the majority of the views will come from the replays. As much as it is important to interact with the live audience, you can also interact with your future audience. Like, hey guys, this is Brian coming to you live from the studio. If you're watching, say hello. And if you're watching this on the replay, comment replay so I know. At a certain point, ask your replay audience to participate. Because you have the energy of a live presentation, they will be more inclined to engage. Number eight. If you're nervous about going live on camera, here's something that really helped me. Remember that you're bringing your audience value. So really, it's not about you, it's about them. If you're passionate about the value that you bring to the world, then go out and help people. That's what it's all about. No one really cares if you're nervous. They care about to find out what you can offer them. Number nine, when your live stream is done, be sure to go back and answer any questions in the comments that you didn't get to in the video. You can also go back and change the data, like the title, the description, the tags, and the thumbnail if you're on desktop. Number 10, advertise ahead of time that you'll be going live. Your banner on your profile is a billboard to use to advertise what's coming up. Use it to let people know when you'll be going live. Create posts a few days before to let people know too. If you're dedicated to live video marketing, then think of creating a regular live show. As you become more consistent, your audience will remember when you go live. 
The point is you can't just go live and expect people to know about it. And number 11 as a bonus, remember that live streaming is getting more and more popular, but there's still not a lot of people yet who, can, who are good at it. By you taking the time to watch this video and take this course, you are well ahead of the curve and with a little practice, you will always be there. Okay, so those are my best practices for you. I'll see you in the next lesson, repurposing your purpose.